Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Lesson 5 of our Full Stack Marin course. Today we're going to be preparing our back end for some more scaling and translating that into our front end. In the last video, we set up nested sub documents as a way to show you guys how nesting uh, works in MongoDB in one way, but we aren't going to be doing this for this specific use case due to the overhead it will eventually cause with how big our application is going to get. So what we're going to be doing in this video is adding a couple new models for uh, posts and comments, and we're going to be setting up post routes for fetching individual or arrays of posts, each of which will have uh, attached user IDs and uh, a comment models to relate the data. We're also going to be setting up the ability for users to follow one another, like each other's posts, and comment on each other's posts. So be sure to stick around to the end of the video, and if you like this kind of content, be sure to like and subscribe. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to be doing is uh, clearing out these fields of user, and we're going to just get rid of the post schema in here. And then uh, under password, what we're going to do is we're going to add following. And we're going to do type uh, array. And we're going to do another called liked posts. And this is going to be type of array as well. And then under that, we're going to do followers. And that's going to be uh, of type array. Same thing. And then... Uh, we will just have that for our user model. And now what we're going to do is going to create two more models. We're going to call one post.js, and we're going to call one comment.js. Inside of post.js, going to const mongoose equals require mongoose. We're going to do a const post schema equals new mongoose.schema, capital S. Uh, sorry, I meant to write title there. So we're going to have the title property. We're going to also have an author ID property. We're going to have a date property. We're going to have a body. We're going to have uh, a number of likes. We're going to have uh, comments. And this is going to be type of ar array for this. And then uh, outside of here, post, post, and post schema, module exports post. So we're going to be exporting a post schema, and we're going to fill this in. So this is going to be a type number default to zero there. Body is going to be type string required. And uh, if you want to do errors in Mongoose, if you didn't know this, you can do an array true and then the error message. Please enter content into the post is what we'll do here. Date, we're going to do type date. Then we're going to do default date now. And then author ID, let me type string required. And we'll do another error message here. We'll do true, no author ID specified, and the errors will become easier. Uh, well, they make it easier, I mean, when our, we have larger sets of data with a lot of models and we're making calls from like our front end, we don't know where the error is. It's going to probably like be easier if we have, you know, this popping up. And then we're, so title type string, and we're going to do required true title required. All right, and then uh, inside of user, we're, we got to save this, and we're going to do uh, our comment schema next. So I'm going to paste this in, since I think you guys get the gist of writing up a schema now. So we have require mongoose, and then we have our comment schema. We have an author ID. We have a con uh, content for the actual comment, and then we have a post ID. So it's relating to two different users. Uh, the author ID of the person who makes the comment and the post ID which then relates to the other user uh, but it's going to be relating to a particular post now because we're not embedding posts inside uh, of users since uh, MongoDB has a size limit of 16 megabytes so you're definitely going to want to not embed too many things like we uh, demonstrated in the first few. So the next thing we want to do is inside of our routes folder we're going to create a file called post routes and we're going to do the same thing in controllers, post controller. And then uh, once we have those two files, we're going to go to our index.js and we're going to do, oh, 
api.use posts post routes I forgot it's not react we gotta actually manually import cons post routes equals require routes post routes and then inside post routes we are going to add the controller first we might as well add the other well whatever cons post controller equals require controllers post controller and then above here cons router equals require express cons router equals router and then module equals router and then uh, we're going to set some routes for getting posts here so router dot get and we'll do a slash here post controller we'll call it get all and then uh, let's just go ahead back into post controller here we're going to do const post equals require models post const user equals require models user and const comment equals require models comment and then we'll create the get all function first get all so this is going to take in a request and a response we're going to do post dot find and we're going to do all so error posts and then we're going to arrow function inside of that error res json error otherwise res json posts and uh, we'll do a reverse so that they go in order of newest first rather than a uh, first submitted first and then uh, for now we will just leave this and what we're going to need to do next is we're going to need to, need to make a way to create a post so we're going to do module.exports.create equals async request response we're going to do post.create we're going to do request body. And we're going to do an error post properties in this function. Error res json error. Otherwise res json posts. Uh, or no, we're going to do success. Uh, or no, sorry. The post is what we want to do is uh, just return the new post. Very simple. For the purpose of testing, we're also going to uh, create a new function in our user. First of all, we're going to delete these ones because uh, we're not going to be embedding our, our posts inside our user anymore, but we can keep uh, this stuff the same other than that. But we're going to add one function in just to clear the database um, so that we can just continue testing it with our new properties. So it's called delete all, and then inside of our user routes, we are going to add we're going to get rid of this first so we have those they're still working we're going to do router dot post and uh, I want to call it code 99 because I'm hilarious and then uh, user controller dot get uh, delete sorry delete all and then uh, we're going to test this in postman real quick just to clear our database so we're going to do CD server node index Oh, we got an error. Let's see what we've done. Mongoose is not defined. Did I not import it? Oh, wait, hold on. This isn't even saved. Uh, which one is this? Is in? Uh, oh, it's in user schema. So. Oh yeah, we didn't import mongoose. That's a that's a whoops from me. Require mongoose. All right, so now let's fire this up. Make sure it's still working. We get API listening, MongoDB connected. All right, cool. So now it's gonna we're gonna open up Postman for the next step. All right, so once we open up Postman, we're gonna go to localhost users code 99. We're gonna send this. It's gonna say cannot post. Let's see what's going on there. User routes code 99. Let's see index. Oh, it's user. Okay, so user, and then uh, it'll say. Oh, we didn't import our post models. Hang on. 
All right, so I found what we have to comment out. We have to do this line and then this line, and then uh, it'll it should work. And then yeah, let's do with this, and then we'll do node index. Here we go. Sends off. It says nuke deployed, and uh, now we can just get all of our user let's or users. So we get all with the slash route. So let's slash or check this. See, oh, we're getting, not posting. We can see that the users are now uh, empty. So now we're going to populate uh, some new users. So let's do a post request, do user slash sign up. Let's go into our body here. Let's do username. Let's do user1. Password. It's going to be user1. Let's sign up here. Okay, we have the new user, so now we're going to do one user 2, user 2, another user, now we're going to do user 3, user 3. Oh. Alright, and this is just going to uh, create users that we can start experimenting with as we move forward. So we can see each user has followers following liked posts, and then, uh, wait, what's going on here? Followers... Oh, wow, okay, that's awkward, hold on. Type array, now we're going to restart this, and I'm gonna, just gonna call code 99 again, <laughs> and then let's just undo what we just did. Okay, so now we can go back to uh, signing them up. So, sign up, let's go back to doing that, user one, user one, user two, user two, user 3, user 3, and now we will have three users with which to experiment uh, moving forward, and each one has an array of following, liked post followers, username, password, and uh, we're going to be able to use re relational esque data in these in our NoSQL uh, non-relational database. Okay, so now let's test our uh, create method on our posts. So we can see here we use the slash posts route to go to the post routes file, which then goes to these routes. So what we're going to add here is we're going to do router dot post create. So this will be slash post slash create, and then we're going to call a function called post controller dot create, and then we're going to define that function in here, which we uh, we already did. <laughs> But basically, we're going to test that right now. So, we're going to go back into Postman. We're going to do a post request on posts create. And if you remember, on our post object, we have a title, author ID, date, body, likes, comment. And uh, comments are not required. Likes have a default. And this, by the way, should say required, not require. And then uh, we are. It's required to have a body, an author ID, and a title. And uh, or wait, this is post. Or yeah, no. So post. So it has a title, an author ID, and a body. And then comment has an author ID, a content, and a post ID. So post is or comment is kind of like a child of post, and post is kind of like a child of user. Is I think a good way to think about that. So when we're in Postman we're going to require a title, an author ID, and we can see the IDs down here, by the way, of our users, and then the other stuff will just fill in automatically, uh, or sorry, other than body, body. This is post one, let's just call this. So if we want a title, post one, then we have an author ID, so let's make this a post by user1. So we're going to, for now, paste this ID to here, and then we're going to send this request to the database. We can't post to posts, oh, it's because we didn't restart the, the thing when, after we added the, the new stuff into the back end. So we're going to try this again. We're going to see we create a new post object with likes, zero, uh, comment, it should be, all right, well, that is unfortunate. We are going to go ahead and delete this with code 99 because we've made another uh, oopsie. But we're going to first put back in the 
these lines now that we have a post to delete because that's supposed to say comments not comment singular uh, so let's go ahead and execute at code 99 so users code 99 we cannot post to is it user yeah it's user isn't it post is not defined did we not import the oh okay I thought it was because we had none yet, but it was because we didn't import it at all, actually. Uh, oh, models. Post. Alright, now let's restart this. Do this again. There we go. Nuke deployed. So now we have a fresh database again. So let's do sign up again. Username. User1. user one or sign them up one we got two then we got three and uh, that'll do us for now so we go back here we submit this po uh, we have to get the new IDs actually so we have the ID let's do user three since it's already up this ID we're gonna pop this into here we're gonna send this request and we see we have a new comment it's got an empty comment array because no one has commented yet. It's got a user ID that the post is attached to. Uh, well, no, sorry, this is the post ID, then this is the author ID, and then it's got the date automatically in there for us. I'm also going to paste a delete route into our post routes. So uh, what we're doing with this one is we're sending a request body with a post ID, and we're just uh, deleting that. And if it's with a user ID, we're just deleting all the post from that user so it's basically like a mini version of, a, of code 99 it just for an individual user in case we we need this later and then uh, another thing that we are going to want to add is we're going to do handle like so the way that we're going to do this is module dot exports but before we do this actually I gotta remember to add the delete route so router post slash delete post controller delete uh, I think that I just called it delete, right? Yeah, delete, save, save. All right, now let's go back here. We're going to do module exports dot handle like. It's going to be async request response. If there's a request dot body, otherwise res json no post id. And inside, if they have that, we're going to do user find by id request body user ID and then error user arrow function here and basically what we're doing here is when we have the user in react we're going to be storing the user in context so basically there's going to inherently be a user that we can get the ID of when we're making our requests from the front end and it's going to be this guy liking another user and which is going to be the, uh, the post context that the request is executed from so when it's on the post that post is going to have an author id and if the context user of who's logged in which is this guy if he likes that post then that post is essentially firing a request that says hey uh, i i am this post and this user is liking me so if there's an error we're going to res json error otherwise we're going to post find by id and this is what I was talking about with the post is going to be firing part of this request where it's request body post ID and then we're going to comma error post arrow function here and then this is going to be the conditional of whether or not this person is liking or unliking the post based on if they've already liked it so you probably know on Facebook or uh, other social media sites I'm sure are similar where if you press on like a retweet or like a like or some sort of thing and then you press it again it just inherently gives the opposite request which is what we're going to be doing here so if user dot liked posts index of request body dot post ID is equal to negative one which means that it's not in the array this is going to happen otherwise this is going to happen so otherwise const index equals user dot liked posts index of request body dot post 
ID. So if it's in the array already, we want the index of it in the array. And then user.liked host, we're going to splice from that index. And then one is the second. So we're going to basically be returning a new array without that uh, in it, and it's going to unlike it. And then we're going to do post.likes minus minus, since post is a number. And then user.save, uh, post.save, and res json post is going to be our default case anyway, but basically the conditional is going to be if we're changing the data. So user.liked posts push post.id. And now the ID of the, the, this post is basically going to be in the array of liked posts. And we're going to do post likes plus plus user.save post.save and then this is uh, this is going to be our like function so back in post routes what we want to do with this is router dot post slash like post controller handle like and then uh, we're going to basically restart our server after that oh did not mean to do that <laughs> I meant to uh, oh all right, node index. That is, yeah, I didn't mean to do a little brace. That was interesting. So anyway, now we want to go back into here, and we're going to do first. We want to get all of the posts. So let's do inside here. We're going to, I believe it was a get request. Yeah, get all posts. So we have user. Or this is going to be posts. Get or sorry, it's just post slash, and then um, we're going to do one property here. And so posts and slash, oh no, we don't need the properties in this, what am I doing? Okay, so we get our post, we have the post that we want to like, so we remember back to here, the request body is going to have a user ID and a post ID, basically. So user ID is the person who's liking it, and uh, post ID is the post to get liked. So user ID, and then post ID. And hang on. So we need the post ID from here, and we're gonna post or pop this into. Oh wait, there's already a colon there. <laughs> here. And then we're going to get our users over here real quick cannot get users, hang on, users, oh it's user, I keep forgetting that, um, okay, so we have user, who's the person who made this post again, I think it was user3, so ff3f is the, ff3f is 3, yeah, so we need our user1 to like this post, so let's take user1's id here, uh, over here, you, and then this is going to be the user ID. So if user one is signed in and he clicks like on this post, then we're going to get this response, uh, posts slash like. And then we can see that this post now has one like, and if we make the request again, it'll be zero likes because we set that conditional so that if the user already uh, liked the post, then it will be set to an unlike button. And we're going to be doing the same thing uh, with that in regard to following and unfollowing users. So speaking of following users, right now we're going to go back into our user routes. We're going to do a new route called router.post, and it's going to be slash follow, and then it's going to be user controller follow user. And then we're going to define this function. So module exports follow user. And we are going to make this an asynchronous request response. So if request body user ID and request body other user ID, and this is basically going to be like the person who wants to follow this person. And then if they don't have that, we're going to send res json 
invalid query. And then we're going to go up here. We're going to do user find by ID, request body user ID, error user one. And then uh, we're going to inside of here, if error, res JSON error. And we're going to do this uh, without the else, just because we want this to happen regardless if possible. So user find by ID, request body, other user ID, other user, arrow function here. So now we're two layers deep basically where we have access to two different users and we can have them manipulate each other. So if, if there's an error, we're also just gonna error log that out. But if there's not, assuming there is not, we are going to do if user one dot following. So if user one here is where we're getting this uh, reference from. So if they're uh, following index of, so if request body other user ID is basically in that array, then we want this to happen. Otherwise, we want this to happen. So let's do the else first again. So const index equals user one dot following index of, and this is probably somewhat familiar now from what we did earlier, request body other user ID, user one dot following dot splice index one, and then const index two equals other user followers. So it goes both ways, following and followers, index of user ID, and then we're going to do other followers splice index to one, and we're going to save both of them. Other user dot save, user one dot save, and then we're going to res JSON other user, since uh, we're going to have the follow buttons basically on the people's profiles, we're going to be returning other user because when uh, this user is gonna be the one that's signed in, and then this is gonna be the profile that they're on, so we wanna return other user to be able to dynamically update the profile uh, that we're on. So back inside of this if uh, statement, we're going to do user one dot following push request body other user ID. So if they're not following each uh, them, then it's going to add them to the list of followers other user dot followers push request body user ID user one dot save other user dot save so now let's test this let's restart our server oh what do we have route dot post requires a function got a callback did we do this to uh high up here hang on which one are we inside of oh we're inside of this one so what we want to do is, oh, it's because I didn't even save the file. <laughs> so, all right, once that's going, we're back. So we follow user. So we just need the two user IDs basically for, uh, for this. And we'll do user slash follow. So we're gonna post slash users follow. We're gonna have, we already have the first user ID. Uh, so this is ff3d who is uh, this is user one so user one is going to follow other user ID it's gonna be let's have him follow user three let's say he really liked that post that he made user I think it was other user ID is what we called it let me see request body other user ID yep so user ID so this guy should follow this guy and let's see what happens cannot post users. Oh, it's because it's, I, <laughs> I'm going to do, do that so many times, I bet. So now we can see that uh, we return the other guy. So it, now his followers is up by one and we have, this is user one's ID. If we send this again, oh, cannot read splice of undefined. Let's see, maybe we goof this up. User, oh, it's because user one we have to fix that. <laughs> so we have this and let's send this now. And we can see that now the followers is blank because we, all right, well, hold on. 
we're gonna send this again. So, so it, did, it didn't reset when this thing happened. It was just just to make sure you guys know. It still says this, and if we send this again now, then it gets cleared. So now we have this uh, dynamically, you know, do, it's doing its own thing essentially. It knows it knows how to process its own requests. All right. So uh, now what we need is the ability to make comments. So we're going to back go back to Post Controller. We're gonna do module dot exports new comment equals request response if request body post ID and request body user ID so it's going to ensure that we have both a post ID to receive the comment and a user ID to be the author of the comment Jason no body submitted and we're inside of here I'm going to do comment dot create we imported comment right yep we have comment so comment dot create and we're going to do the author ID uh, set to request body user ID it's going to be post ID request body post ID and if you're wondering where these properties come from just refer back to here author ID post ID and content is all we need for these ones the content is obviously going to be done uh, in the actual request though it's not going to be <laughs> not going to be hard coded so we're going to do content request body content we're going to do error and then it's going to return us a comment there we go so then what we're going to do here is inside of the comment we're going to do post.find by id request body post id and we're going to do error post inside of there if error or is JSON error and what we're basically doing here is we had an array without a type of array set up so we're going to be pushing comment objects into the array here so basically we're just basically yeah we're, <laughs> we're doing post dot save very simple and then uh, res json post is what we're going to in the end return from that so in a sense it's like comment is embedded but uh, it's also its own model so it's definitely easier to work with in that sense so we're going to then save that so we're going to be creating two more methods before we get back into our front end stuff uh, inside of post controller we're going to do module dot exports dot get by We're going to be doing post.find request body. So depending on what the user searches for, it's going to just look for that property and value in posts. And then it's going to return error, res JSON error. We're going to do post.reverse on that. And then uh, we're also going to do module.exports.get or, and this is basically going to be if the user wants to get the uh, posts of mul one or multiple authors sorry <laughs> so if, if we want to send multiple authors in one request we're going to be doing it like this so let body equals object entries body let query equals and we're going to do a dollar sign or and then it's going to be equal to an empty array and basically what this is is if we were trying to do like a post.find and you wanted to do it by multiple queries what you would do is like so where we have here post find request body this would be uh, like we could say author ID or ID is equal to some author ID and then we could do a comma or sorry this would be an object inside of the array and then we could do like something and then we could do author ID is something else and then it would basically run both of these queries but for now we're going to set it equal to a blank array so that we can dynamically uh, add the basically the so body dot for each so this basically creates an array of the entries in the body and then we're going to loop through them and we're going to do object arrow query and then dollar sign or so the array inside query push and we're going to push the object author ID is going to be equal to object one 
and the reason it's one is because each one of these is going to be an array with the uh, key and the value and we're setting the key we're hard coding that here so we just want the value that it's equal to so after we have that we just want to close that off and then we're going to post.find query or error posts and that's going to basically just allow us to get posts by uh, multiple people or uh, queries basically well in this case author ID because we hard coded it but we can we can check that out later if uh, we want to do it but with other properties so then the way that we're going to do this is going to be post or router dot post we're going to do post for an individual post controller get by and then this is going to be by the individual property and then this is going to be router post and we're going to just call this a uh, hmm, get slash or it's kind of confusing calling a post request a get but I'm going to do it anyway so post controller and what did we call it get or uh, get or and then uh, basically we're going to hopefully see why this is relevant in a sec here once we move to our front end which we're going to be doing after we restart our server and uh, we're also I guess testing these in Postman real quick so back in Postman I'm just gonna create two more posts uh, post 2 this is post 2 we got post 3 and this is post 3 and then uh, once we do that, we're going to create a, a like and a comment on a post. So let's go here. Well, first we'll do this follow thing. So, well, we can, we already demonstrated that actually. So let's just do the likes, uh, post routes. So po uh, we did the user like. So did we add the comment thing in? Hold on. Uh, add, oh yeah, new comment and like. Yeah, we have the like. So router post comment new post controller dot new comment alright so now we have to restart one more time okay so comment post slash comment slash new and we remember that in that function we have a request body post ID and a request body user ID so the post here let's do post 3 first I guess why not post 3 we're gonna like this so we need user ID post ID post ID right there user ID I think this is a FF3D is user 1 okay cool so user 1 is going to leave a comment on this and he's going to say uh, or no this is called and content request body content yeah Hey, nice post, man. And let's see what we get as a response. We can see the comments. Now we have an object. Hey, nice post, man, from a user, user one on user three's post. All right, so this video is approaching 40 minutes. I'm just uh, seeing guys. So I'm gonna leave it off here. And uh, in the next video, we're going to be basically rendering this new data and the functions that we've added into our React front end. So if you like this kind of content, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.